Welcome everybody. So today uh, we will be going to cover uh, this little horse eye right here. This is uh, going to be a little baby foal. Um, this is going to be 11 by 14, but I have it zoomed in just on the eye. So that is what we're going to focus on today. So I have my reference photo uh, on the other side of me here. And what we're going to do first is gently erase some of these lines. Just enough. If you have a kneaded eraser, um, that would probably work a little bit better. I also have a sanded eraser, though I usually only try to use it if I absolutely have to. Okay, so we can still kind of see the outline of the eye. Uh, what I typically like to start with is the highlights. And while I am sharpening my pencil, I'll give a little quickie about me. So uh, my name is Cassie Grimes and I am a colored pencil portrait artist. Uh, and I mainly do animals. I have done a few uh, people, uh, and I'm also kind of exploring watercolor and uh, some other mediums, but I mainly do colored pencil. Uh, and I've been drawing since I was a, uh, an infant, <laughs> as far as back as I can remember. Um, and I decided that I need to make a a YouTube channel and just put some of my my drawings up on there and maybe help some of you guys out and because this is my style how I do it and might as well share with you guys. So what we're going to start with first is there are some eyelashes on this little guy's eye here and I'm trying to find where did it go? Well, I guess I could probably use... Well, I have my little embossing tools, but they seemed to have disappeared. And these... Oh, I found them. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about right here. It's this embossing tool. Uh, so we're going to make like little eyelashes for our little guy here. And the eyelashes seem to and we're just going to do a couple we don't have to do like a whole lot and basically what that does is it indents the paper so when we go over it with a like a darker color it's not going to shade that in i'm going to go in with my white there i'm going to go ahead and add my highlight to my eye and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it, I'm just adding it in there. Because if I don't, then when I go in with a dark color, uh, it will be very hard to get that white again. Okay, so there is some gold color in the eye as well. So we're going to go ahead. And I'm basically... On the little circles. This is goldenrod Prismacolor. Go ahead, little circles. And so this is the underneath. Uh, what? Uh, not your pupil, but I believe the iris. The color around the around the pupil. So we got some gold in there. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and sharpen a little bit of this pencil real fast. We're going to add some cream color. Just a little bit.
and it just gently blends in a little bit so it prepares a smoother transition uh, when I add our light umber. And I obviously did not come prepared for this. I am sharpening pencils left and right. Sharpen, sharpen. So I'm using light umber. And I am... Now since this is going to be 11 by 14, the amount of detail that's going to be in this eye is personally up to me, right? So I can either do as detailed as I possibly want or just get like the general idea because at some point how small this is you can only fit so much detail in there now you can spend for you know hours if you want working on an eye or you can spend just one hour and then feel accomplished and move on with your life so whichever one works best for you so now we can kind of start to see that the color is coming into the eye. The other thing I'm going to do now, since I have that color, I'm going to find my uh, black. I had a nice like little black pencil. Uh, it was a harder wax. And I found it. Uh, it is from Prismacolor as well, but it's the um, their Verther, I don't know how to say that, but I like to use these before, um, I use the softer wax. So, let's see. So, now I'm kind of, I want you to think that when you start kind of drawing the eyes, especially if you're like up close, don't forget eyes are kind of watery. And it, once you kind of start thinking about, okay, they're a little bit watery, maybe they have, um, I don't want to say tears, but uh, to kind of have like that uh, wet look to it. Try not to be too harsh with your lines. So right now I'm just making the uh, bottom of the eyelid, just gently kind of mapping it out with my pencil here. And then I'm going to take a another Prisma, powder blue. I do have other brands of colored pencils, um, I'm just so used to using... Uh, Prismacolor, that, that is the most amount that I have. Alright, so we added a little highlight there, and then as we go on, as we keep progressing, we can always adjust that a little bit. Okay, now the other parts are gray, so I'm going to grab, I can either grab a warm gray, or there is a French gray that I do also like using as well. So whoop, these are the two colors. I'm just trying to find my the position of my camera here. I think I'm gonna go with the French gray and we are going to just lightly kind of frame in the top of the eyelid here. just gently because this other part also has uh starts to do his uh, hair color kind of come down and it swoops in like this and then i don't know if you can see but we do have little arrows here to help distinguish the flow of hair so once we get done with the eye um this eye particularly we will zoom out and i will show you guys more of that as well unless i forget so one, <laughs> one of those two So like as a like right now the hair goes wee, but that's why I really don't want to start going any further than the eye. 
You don't have to start with the eye if you don't want to on any of your drawings either. Uh, I used uh, I when I started, I used to save them for last, but um, for me, I find that once you once you get the eye, if you get the eye right, get the eyes right, and then it makes it easier to visualize what the whole piece is supposed to look like. Okay, so now I'm going to take my uh, dark umber. So I do have to say, this is just visually what I am seeing. Uh, maybe you might see a different color. Maybe you might think that uh, maybe the eye that you're working on might be cooler in color. So maybe you might use like a, a darker blue or a more purple red, like a dark purple. But you can kind of start to see it's starting to, to come to life a little bit. And I also hope one day to upgrade <laughs> my recording system here. I, I used to stream a lot and, you know, it worked for that. And as far as picking up all these little details, um, it, 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 it does struggle, I do to say. But I mean, this is pretty tiny. I mean, that's the size of my fingernail and I have kind of small hands and then that's the size of the eye. So, I mean, try imagine drawing this eye like on your fingernail like that's it's pretty tiny so uh i mean there's really not too much to see and that's the key sometimes adding too much detail takes away from the overall effect of your piece okay so i also have i want to connect the lower lid behind the eye and have it drop down here. Okay, and then I'm going to gently just add more dark umber up through. Now see, good thing we uh, dented some of our paper up here. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there's this little spot right here that I put for eyelashes. So it definitely helped save us there. Now I can gently go over that area. Okay. We are definitely on our way. I try not to spend too much time on the eyes, especially when they're small. Uh, there's only, again, there's only so much you can do. You can definitely overwork an area, so uh, to the point to where it is 110% not what you wanted. Okay, so now I have this like really golden eye, so this full size is not that golden. But once I start adding more and more layers on, it'll just be a slight subtle underneath. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adding uh, this cream just to help me visualize a little bit better of the eye. Oh my gosh, my whole board is moving when I do that. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Okay, anyway, um, so <laughs> come up here and I'm just adding a little bit of cream. This is a under color for uh, the lower part of the eye here. And did you guys know, fun fact, that when you do draw, um, you draw with like the right side of your brain and it's also the same side that um, you use your speech on as well. So sometimes when an artist, you know, you're watching a video and they stop to talk, it's because it's very, it is difficult to draw and talk at the same time. Some people are better at it than others. Uh, sometimes I <laughs> will probably be stopping so that I can talk to you guys. Now, I typically, um, when I draw, uh, I do listen to like, like shows or something. Uh, but sometimes I notice that my best work is when I have 
silence. Just peace and quiet, or just light, ambient music. And for some reason that, like, it just allows yourself to continue to be creative and being in that certain state of mind. Okay, I am, there's this, oops, there's this little spot that I want to make a highlight spot. So I'm going to take my little embossing tool and I'm going to press down until I have sufficiently flattened a, an itty bitty little spot. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my white and I'm going to go in that same spot and I like to cover up that little area. Just in case. Okay. Um, the current color I'm using is this uh, dark green. Um, vert ochre. Green green ochre. Um, I, I obviously have handled this pencil a lot, so the verbiage has uh, disappeared. Um, but I do know it's a colored pencil. So let's go ahead and continue. And I'm constantly looking back and forth at my reference drawing. Okay, we're starting to, uh, get so that's the other reason why uh, sometimes I get, I just get going. I kind of get the base color on and I just like, okay, cool. That looks great. Let's uh, see what this next section kind of looks like. And I just get going. I don't mean to, it just kind of, just kind of happens. Okay. Enough of the outside of the eye. <laughs> We're gonna continue the inside. Um, I am going to add a little bit of green in here as well. I think that would look really nice. So uh, pressure-wise, uh, if you can see, um, I'm probably, oh, there we go. I'm probably using that amount of pressure. So not enough to like, Poke through your hand, okay? Don't do that hard. You don't have to do that hard. Just enough. And then if you really want to go light, just enough so that you can kind of feel it across the top of your hand. I always uh, have to stop and be like, oh, okay, easy on the pressure. Sometimes I get a little impatient. And so I'm actually hoping that this video series will help me become more patient with time. But now you can see that that gold color is so not as bright. It's a little bit more dull, which is good. That's, that's what I want. I'm going to go back in with my dark umber. I'm not going to use black yet. I'm going to black's going to be last. Now, if you've ever seen a horse's eye, they are very similar to goat's eyes. Uh, and they have that uh I I want to call it like a a rectangle, lack for a better word. They have like a rectangle pupil. Okay, and then we can also actually go up here and start gently shaping our highlight up here. Maybe this foals looking at maybe some trees or something. I think that's pretty cool. And then we're gonna add some highlights under, not highlights, shadows. <laughs> Shadows 
right underneath right there that's underneath our island okay okay now we are going to add some black this is our softbox prismacolor black uh, I do I, I have noticed that the prismacolor black is on the cooler end than let's say the dermal chroma flow uh, the Durant Coma Flow uh, black is more has I I feel like it has more red in it, so it's a warmer tone of black. Now we'll go ahead and darken that shadow up again underneath of here. And go ahead and darken that up. If you use solvents, um, that would probably be a good time to use solvents. Um, this is such a small area, I just don't want my solvents to make it muddy. Uh, I tip, I usually do use solvents, so um, on larger areas, it just helps kind of speed up the process just a little bit. Okay, I am going to add light umber. And so right now I'm doing a bit more pressure. You can start to see this eye is coming to life. I'm gonna go back to my dark umber. And, oh, actually I want to use my Tuscan color because I want to add a little bit of red. So this is Tuscan red. Prismacolor again. I know, but I like my Prismacolors. And I'm going to go in the bottom here. And around the black part of his pupil. And we got a little bit more red in there. I'm going to come back in with my gold color. Now this is a harder pencil. So I'm kind of just using this as a, a blender at the moment. <sighs> Trying not to smear anything left or right. I'm going to go in with my dark umber again. And I'm basically now adding the very subtle shadows Let's see if we can get a little bit closer for you guys. So again, very tiny. It doesn't have to be crazy detailed either. I am gonna go in and, oop, with my powdered blue at the top. And add a little bit of that in there. Usually adding a little bit of a blue color into, especially if the animal is outside, into the highlight at the top helps a lot because a little bit more of a realistic color than just having white okay my next thing I'm looking through my pencils <laughs> we're going to add some of the eyelashes on there now 
Just gotta get my pencil sharpened, because, you know, I am definitely prepared. Okay. And we're just gently going to add in some eyelashes. This horse also has some white eyelashes. So just gently add those. <sighs> I'm going to go back in with my black now that I have everything situated. And I'm going to grab... Ooh, let's see. I have this nice slate gray color that, yes, needs sharpen. Don't mind me. Do, 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 do. Okay, get that sharpened. So I think we're about like 20 ish, 25 minutes into this, and we've already got this cute little eye on here. Now, right here is, it kind of begins its shadow. So we're kind of going to just add this slate gray in. Just around the eye. Cool. So, and I know it's a zoomed up, um, and my camera can only pick up so much detail. So, but now uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of go through uh, the other start, the other parts of the eye, excuse me. And I'm going to draw some little lines and little arrows. So this is the way that the hair is moving, and it comes up here, and it comes together. I'm just j lightly drawing these on. And if this helps you, you don't have to draw, again, you don't have to draw like a hundred of them. But sometimes, drawing a few will help you tremendously. If you can get the fur direction right, this comes here and goes down. Our fur right here has a little bit of a curve. Goes down and up again, down and up again. And then it finally falls. Okay. Got a general direction of our fur. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to just probably start with our cream. Okay, 
I can visually see where things are starting. So let's start back here. And I'm just going to gently fill this in. And then I'm going to take my embossing tool. Actually, I wonder if I have my smaller one. Do I have my itty bitty? Oh, I do have my itty bitty one. Okay, so it's like my really tiny embossing tool compared to the one I used earlier for the eyelashes. And I, there are, um, so this full, I think is going to be a rolling color. Uh, it has a lot of uh, white, very prominent white. Uh, they're not highlights, they're actually white first, sticking out. So we will be adding those in here. That will also help with our direction of our fur as well. Okay, and then go ahead and we'll do the top here. So I'm adding the yellow, uh, the cream color first, so that if uh, I do end up subtracting any wax from the top, the yellow color will be right underneath to help uh, prevent like me scraping up my actual paper. And also it's a nice little base color too. Nice like little peekaboo. You can probably actually see some of my indents on there. Now what's kind of really cool is that since this uh, cream color you can't really tell, you can just glide it right on there. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't tell the strokes. See, I told you, the right side of the brain thing. It almost feels like I'm kind of sculpting, I guess, in a way. Okay, let's see. There is a fur pattern change right here. So it helps having really good reference photos. <laughs> That's another key thing. Okay, there's not too much uh, white fur down this way. Let me see. 
That looks pretty smooth. Probably add a couple going this way and then it goes down. All right, so now that I mapped out all of that, we are going to take Sierra Brown and we're going to gently add in. Now this is where you, you still want to go when you start doing darker colors, you want to go with the way of the fur. So I'm just looking back and forth at my reference photo. Man, I hope one day I can get a camera so you guys can really see the vibrance of these colors. This is not doing you guys justice, but at least the technique is there. Okay, I'm gonna come down this way. I apologize if I get silent. And you can see how, since we added those little dents on our paper, it's really helping us get the flow. Now over time, the more you layer up your pencils, the more that you can make those lines disappear. But if you want them to stay on, just make sure you continue to do light pressure. Okay, I'm gonna take my light umber. You can start to see the colors are starting to come in. Now this horse does appear to have some cool colors mixed in with his coat. So I'll give you a little bit on how I do, or at least like what colors I use for that.
colors are starting to come to life. Cool. Okay. I want to grab... I have, I do have a dark purple, um, but it's a little too, like, purpley. <laughs> so I have this black raspberry, and I also have a raisin color from Durant Corma Flow Raisin. So, uh, I'm probably going to give, let's see, I'm off on this side here, just doing, ooh. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do the black raspberry. The black raspberry is a little bit cooler in color. Get that little sharpen. And there's just a couple spots. I'd like to add that in. And then we'll probably add a little bit of cool gray in there as well. You can kind of start to see starting to, it looks, I do have to say, the color in, in person looks a bit different than it does on our image here. So, apologize for that, but my little camera's doing its best. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back in with our Tuscan Red. This horse does have uh, some orange throughout it as well, so we can either use our gold color, or I do have, I have a pumpkin color, and hmm, trying to see which, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, we're going to go with the soft version. The softer wax. Both through Prismacolor. So I'm using the pumpkin orange color. Prismacolor. Sorry, it's like... Oh, there we go. Prismacolor pumpkin orange. And... Going to add... That in. I do have a Facebook page. Uh, if you guys use Facebook, it's like my main update. I do have a website as well. It's uh, CJG Fine Art. And if you would like a portrait done, you can go on there and submit a request. You don't have to purchase anything, you can just submit a request and then we go over uh, basically what you're looking for, what uh, what pictures you have, etc, etc. I think people are always afraid to add orange, but then once you start blending it over with some other colors, it, it ends up pretty being okay.
I think this little guy is going to turn out really cool. So, okay, I'm going to get my camera set up for a little bit farther away. Oh, just give me one moment. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I zoomed out, I refocused uh, my camera. Uh, you guys can actually see a little bit <laughs> better of a color. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing I do want to do, because I do use solvents, I kind of want to use a little bit of solvents right here, um, but my, our time is actually coming up. So, uh, let me see, because there are other things uh, I, Fortunately, and unfortunately, have to do today. So, um, we may cover solvents in a different video, but we did cover the eye and we covered some embossing techniques. So, basically, uh, my next steps would be to solvent uh, these. Now, the solvent will probably uh, kind of fill in some of the uh, embossing that we did. That's okay. I'm okay with that. And then I'm basically going to do the same thing I did, but maybe uh, maybe two more times, maybe three more times, and then just add some more rich colors in there, such as a little bit of dark umber, definitely more um, orangey colors and more gold colors. So until next time, thank you guys so much. And sorry I had to cut it short. Well, I guess it's not really short. We've been at this for almost 50 minutes, so... <laughs> But uh, keep an eye out for part two. Uh, we might cover uh, more face next time. So that's what we will do. Thank you guys so much for watching and catch you next time. Bye.